Today's video is going to be on another spy camera. Uh, this is actually a coat hook spy camera. So the camera is in the very top there. The switch to activate it is right there. Uh, power key is in the back so you can turn it on and off. The USB charger port is right here below it. The SD card fits down in the bottom here. The SD card is kind of hard to get to but um, it's not the worst I've ever seen. It's definitely not the best. Uh, it comes with an SD card. This one does. It's a 32 megabyte. The first thing we want to do is we want to put our SD card in here. Now, after you put your SD card in, you want to charge these. You want to charge them fully. Uh, it takes up to three to four hours to charge. Uh, so you want to fully charge this unit before using it. You want to completely drain it the first four or five times. So basically just run it until it's dead before you start charging again. That way you get um, the maximum life out of the battery. So the battery does still store a little memory on these. Um, again, it's an inexpensive product, so um, you have to treat them like inexpensive products. So this is going to stay charged for probably three to four hours once you get it fully charged. If it's on motion, if it's on full record and recording all the time, you might get two hours out of it before it dies. It's supposed to record 1080p and audio. So on the side over here, there's a blue indicator light that tells you when it's powered on. The other hole is the microphone. So from three feet or more away, you would never know this was a camera. Once you get up closer and personal, like if you were actually going to hang something on here, if you knew this was a camera or you were somewhere where you suspected there might be cameras, um, which technically in this world nowadays, you should sus suspect cameras everywhere in any place. Um, you can actually see that there's a lens in there and I would know that was a camera personally. Uh, my wife, probably not. I could actually probably hang it in the bathroom and do a test on it and find out whether she knew it was a camera or not. Nine times out of ten, she would never know that's a camera. So it comes with a little mounting plate. Um, I'm going to use command tape because I'm just going to temporarily mount it somewhere so I can just test it and see how it works, see how the audio and video is on it. Um, but it does come with its own mounting tape, uh, a couple little tiny screws. Now, if I was going to use this camera in a situation let's say a nanny cam office cam something like that make sure you hit a stud because if you don't hit a stud and this thing falls off the wall uh your cover is going to be blown and if it's not your business um, or not your house um you're going to be probably going to jail um, so make sure you first of all don't use it illegally anywhere and if you are going to put it somewhere make sure it's mounted properly so it doesn't fall off the wall now when you mount this, the plate's going to be on the wall already. You're just going to put this up against the wall and you're going to slide it up and that's all that holds it on. So it's going to hang with the weight of the hook. Something else to remember also is if somebody picks up on their coat, catches this bottom hook, the whole thing comes up off the wall in their hands, they're going to be able to see it also. So I would not put this anywhere where people are actually going to use it practically. So I would not put this in a bathroom or in a dressing room. Um, where someone's going to take stuff on and off of it all the time. Now it would work like in your bedroom if you're using it for a nanny cam, if you hung your bathrobe on here yourself and just left the bathrobe, if the bathrobe just hung there all the time, it would be very inconspicuous. No one would ever walk over to it. No one would ever question this as a camera. If you tried to put it in a dressing room or something like that where people were changing all the time, someone's going to notice this as a camera and you're going to get busted for it. So now I want to put my SD card back into my camera. Again, let's see if you got smaller fingers. This is not in a good spot for my big fat fingers. Not as nimble as I used to be either, so. And once I pop that in there, I want to power it on. I'm going to let it power up. When it's done powering up, I'm going to shut it back off. I'm going to remove the SD card one more time. Put it back in my computer. And now we've got a couple folders on here. So it actually puts its own timestamp and folders up there. So if you want to timestamp these, you have to actually click on this document. The document opens it up and it puts the time and the date up here in the top. So you could actually write the time and the date on this. To me, these spy cameras, I mean, unless you're using it in a business, trying to catch somebody stealing something, the time and date stamp is not going to matter on it. 
Uh, second problem is, is if you're using this as a hidden camera, unless you tell everybody in most states that there are hidden cameras in use, it's inadmissible in court anyhow, so it's not going to do you any good. So basically the timestamp for me is worthless, but if you wanted to, you could go in and actually change the timestamp on it. And as long as it's powered up, it will continue to keep the timestamp on it, but it's not Wi-Fi, it's not going to auto-update the time on it, so it has no way of keeping time. It would just be the time and date that you started the recording. Now the video folder, once it records videos, basically you'll click on that and the videos will show up here. I think they're MOV files, uh, probably AVI files. So I'm going to go hang it up somewhere, um, let's test it out, see what it looks like on the wall, and then um, see what the video and audio sound like. Okay, this is just my garage. I went ahead and mounted the mounting plate. Again, I just used some command tape for now since it's temporary for me. Uh, what you need to do is you need to power this on before you hang it. All right, so I'm putting the SD card back in. I'm going to bring it out here in the light where you can see it. Pop it back in place. I went ahead and I mounted the mounting plate to the door. This is about where uh, you would hang a, uh, a bathrobe or something in your bedroom uh, or a garment. So it's right at like almost six feet high. Again, I'm going to turn the switch on on the back here. So when I flip the switch on, the indicator lights will light up. Let me know I've got power on it. And again, that's something else I don't like either. When the indicator light is lit, if this is not powered, if it's not recording, the light's on to let you know that it has power. Um, so if somebody sees this from the side, which I'm going to hang up. I mean, you have to get way around there, but you can actually see an indicator light on there. So that's another reason to not have uh, this particular device hanging anywhere that can be seen or found. So we're powered up, hanging on the wall or on the door. Um, again, if there was a robe or something hanging in front of that, uh, if it was a bedroom and you hung your bathrobe on there all the time, that would be super inconspicuous. No one would ever walk over. No one would get near it. No one would question it. So to record on this, if you press it one time, it starts recording and it just keeps on recording until the battery dies. If you press it twice, it records motion. And on the side, the indicators both flash and then they'll turn off. So as long as it's recording, the indicator lights are turned off. If it's not recording, the indicator light is on. Now that can be bad if it's not recording and someone sees it and there's a big blue light shining on your code hook. Um, that's pretty obvious that there's something that's not there that should be. Or something that's there that should not be, I should say. So we'll leave it hanging there for a minute. I'm just going to walk around for a little bit, do my normal thing, and I'll pull the audio and video off here. I'll talk to it. I'm talking normal right now. So when I play the video back and the audio back, we'll be able to hear what it sounds like. And then I'll see how well the motion works. Now I'll just move it to the center of the room somewhere and see how much of the room we can actually cover. The garage is 24 by 24, so um, this would be more like a closet here or a closet size space versus the entire room. Okay, so I'm back to the computer now. I'm just gonna plug in the device from the back. Now you can pop the SD card out, hook this back on the wall, take the SD card back with you. Um, let's say you were gonna continue to keep this in place all the time. Again, I would put a 256 megabyte card in there. You could probably remove it once daily. You're still gonna have to find a way of charging this thing though. So it will run off a battery pack. You could take a little small battery pack with you. You would almost need two of these if you're gonna try to keep some sort of covert operation going. So basically you could pop one of these off, charge it, pop the other one on while this one's charging and keep swapping them all the time. You can keep swapping the memory card out that way also. Um, but basically all you have to do is plug this back in and you plug it in. Uh, the computer will, first time you plug it in, it'll come up and ask you what you want to do with this device. I always set it to open files, so that's why it pops right up for me. If not, you may have to actually go into the file folder and pull this up. So there's my timestamp, which again, we didn't change. My video files, if I double click on that without click on the word. There's the audio that it recorded. And we'll see how high it is. I'll pull it up on the computer. I'll drag it into the video editing software and edit it right in. So if we just wanted to see what this was looking like, if I double click on the folder, it comes up and plays it. And there's my ball. Now watching the playback on here, I can tell you already, if you're going to use this as a um, hook in the room, you need to mount it lower. It needs to be mounted right around four feet, maybe five feet at the most. Uh, that's mounted at six feet. And as you can see, I'm already 15 feet away from it. And you can just barely see the bottom half of me there. 
So anything higher than five feet, you're going to lose a lot of the video. The audio sounds okay. It's not perfect, but you can make out what someone was saying in the room. When I zoom in on this or when I get back to it where I'm doing the uh, close-up video, as you can see, I'm probably getting a little closer. I'm probably still three or four feet away from it there. So if someone was actually going over to hang something on that, um, you're going to catch them from the neck up, basically. Um, so again, if you're hanging keys on there, you're trying to catch somebody in the office doing something, it would probably work fine. But as a coat hanger or a clothes hanger, it's definitely, by the time you put it down to where it would actually pick up the entire room, it's going to be so low that it's going to stand out like a sore thumb. So overall, I would say out of a 10, I'd give that about a 5. Um, if you can find the right location for it, the right place, there's a right place and the right um, location for just about everything. Uh, this would have to be a key holder. Um, let's say if it was a bar, if you put this behind the bar, um, where the keys were, or like where you know someone kept some store keys or something like that, you could hang it back there. It would be good. But again, if it's over five feet in the air, you're not going to be able to see anything. So as long as it's recording, the indicator lights are turned off. If it's not recording, the indicator light is on. Now that can be bad if it's not recording and someone sees it and there's a big blue light shining on your code hook. Um, that's pretty obvious that there's something that's not there that should be. Or something that's there that should not be, I should say. So we'll leave it hanging there for a minute. I'm just going to walk around for a little bit, do my normal thing, and I'll pull the audio and video off here. I'll talk to it. I'm talking normal right now. So when I play the video back and the audio back, we'll be able to hear what it sounds like. And then I'll see how well the motion works. Now I'll just move it to the center of the room somewhere and see how much of the room we can actually cover. The garage is 24 by 24, so um, this would be more like a closet here or a closet size space versus the entire room. Since I've never used this before, I don't know if it's recording right now. I'm talking normal voice. I am 12 feet away from the uh, camera or the device hanging on the wall. From 12 feet away, I would never know that's a camera. You can't see the peephole. You can't see the anything. They make that in a white. If it was in white, you would definitely see a black dot at the top. So I would never get the white one with the camera in it. I'm moving closer now. I'm six feet away. From six feet away, I still can't really see the camera in there. I can see a little panel at the top, but I could not tell it was a camera from six feet away. If I walk to three feet away, I can see the pinhole obviously right now, and I can see the switch to turn on the audio, uh, the audio and video. Now I would not know that it was a switch because most of these have some sort of a release to, to get them up off the wall. So when you hang them, you can get them back up the wall. So again, it's still not obviously a camera to anyone that doesn't install cameras or doesn't know what to look for. Once I'm within arm reach, I can tell this is a camera. I can see the lens. I can see the reflective or reflectivity of the lens inside of it. And I can also see the pinholes on the side for the uh, microphone. So from three feet away, it's pretty obvious. Now again, put it in a bedroom somewhere, you hang something on it that just hangs there all the time, keys or something like that. Um, this is a pretty good device. If someone's actually going to use this practically in a dressing room or somewhere where you're going to hang garments and lift them on and off all the time, bad choice. So I'm going to push this one time to stop. And I'm just putting this, this time I'm going to go down a little bit lower. So I'm going to go about chin high, which is a little bit over five feet. So about there. And again, it might not be perfectly straight because again, I'm just sticking here temporarily. And I'm going to see what the room coverage is. Let's see what the motion does. See if it keeps on recording me from back here. Now the garage is 24 feet deep. Uh, the lighting here is not perfect, but it should be okay. Um, Again, I'm just talking in a normal voice, um, in case you want to check what the audio sounds like. And then we'll go back in, we'll pull up on the computer, we're going to see what it sounds like, we'll put the video together and upload it.